Let's be respectful to him. There's four million people coming in, so there's a lot of control. We love the guys. We love the cops. It's only a matter of time. Justice is coming. Let the people in. Constitution. Some of the highest levels and some of the lowest levels, like pollsters, so that they could bring us down from the inside, ladies and gentlemen, because they knew there's a gun behind every blade of grass, and they couldn't take on the American military. So they had to try to sneak in the back door. On the On January 6, 2021, a mob of people invaded the halls of Congress. This crowd of Trump supporters entered the building to confront the members of Congress, claiming that Joe Biden stole the presidency from Donald Trump. Five people died immediately before, during, and after as a result of this riot. Four officers who were at the Capitol committed suicide within seven months. So how did this happen? Why did this happen? There isn't a single answer. This attempted coup resulted from misinformation, conspiracy theory, lies, and desperate supporters. Today, I'm going to tell that story. This is Jacob Chansley, also known as the QAnon Shaman. He was one of the first rioters to enter the Capitol and was sentenced to 41 months in prison for his role in the riots. He was also a vocal believer in the QAnon conspiracy theory. On October 28, 2017, a post was created on the subreddit r slash poll, or politically incorrect page. An anonymous user signing off only as Q created a post that claimed Hillary Clinton would be arrested between 7.45 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. Eastern on Monday, the morning on October 30th, 2017. This mysterious poster would soon be coined as QAnon, claiming they had secret government access and that they were a part of a group of government officials who had access to information the public wasn't aware of. This includes claiming politicians were actively taking part in child trafficking and that Donald Trump was going to defeat these pedophilic, Satan-worshipping elites within government and the media. QAnon was quickly kicked off of 4chan and had to move to 8chan, an anonymous sharing message board platform similar to 4chan, but with far less site moderation. After its creation, 8chan became the host of not only the QAnon conspiracy theory, but also white supremacism, neo-Nazi groups, and child pornography, which is a little ironic since that is what QAnon supporters are allegedly trying to fight against. But that's besides the point. <laughs> thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people anonymously, and eventually not anonymously, supported and believed what QAnon was sharing on 8chan. The mysterious Q had no proof that what they were saying was legitimate, but people flocked to their anti-establishment ideologies. QAnon supporters also quickly moved from the secrecy of 8chan to overtly posting things on Twitter. According to the FBI, QAnon and other fringe conspiracy theories could, quote, very likely motivate some domestic extremists, wholly or in part to commit criminal and sometimes violent activities. The QAnon conspiracy theorists were extremely violent in their rhetoric online. 8chan was actually used in the planning of the attack on the Capitol, with some posts on the message boards discussing which politicians they would kill once they entered. Now, back to the QAnon shaman. How do conspiracy theorists insert themselves into these people's psyches so deeply? What exactly convinces these people to believe these outlandish conspiracies? Karen Douglas is a professor of social psychology at the University of Kent, and she names three reasons. Those three main motives, those three psychological motives, the epistemic, existential, and social, is possible to summarize, I guess, the psychological literature on conspiracy theories um, into those three motivations. The epistemic motive refers to the need for knowledge and certainty. These people crave an explanation and want to feel certain of the truth. A common quote for QAnon supporters is, do the research. The research they complete is technically not accurate or logical at all, but it proves their own truth. The second motive, existential, refers to people's need to feel safe and the desire for autonomy. These supporters do not want to feel powerless. These QAnon conspiracy theorists made Trump their all-powerful leader and claimed that he would eventually save everyone from these pedophilic elites, allegedly by winning the 2020 presidential election. 
The last motive is the social motive, which is the desire for people to feel good about themselves and the desire for people to belong to a group. One of QAnon's strongest sayings is WWG1 WGA, which stands for where we go one, we go all. And it only adds to the flame when the person the entire conspiracy is mainly about gives these supporters little breadcrumbs. Trump would consistently repost content that included these secret phrases and imagery. QAnon was the catalyst, the supporters were the spark, and Trump only added wood to the already burning fire. This, in culmination, led to the January 6th insurrection. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. Today we will see whether Republicans stand strong for integrity of our elections, but whether or not they stand strong for our country.